Hi, I'm Patrick Pollan, CEO and founder of Favro, and this is the Learn From Leaders podcast. The background to this show is that Favro customers are some of the most innovative companies in the world. Enterprises wanting to be more agile, software as a service companies scaling fast, and game developers and publishers wanting to master live ops. So we get to know some truly inspiring leaders in product development, marketing, operations, sales, executive management. And what we do here is that we interview them about leadership so we can all learn from them. Let's go. And moving into, you know, part, uh, part two here, we're, we're going to talk about, um, you know, more, you know, what does, what does leadership, you know, look like for, um, you know, for any kind of manager on any level, you know, uh, moving from now and into the future. But before that, I just want to summarize a little bit some of the things that were said, you know, here. Um, actually, a lot of, one of what I thought about was that it's also a bit about what was not said. You know, you you focus a lot on trust and that, you know, if you if you want to have empowerment, you know, in the teams, you know, you need to have that level of trust and, and there's a lot of focus on that. And we actually didn't really talk about why that is even important. You know, you, I mean... I'm not surprised that talking to the two of you that this is just taking for granted. It's like, well, we do want empowerment in the team. We do want trust. You know, I, I, you know, we want a bit more flat organization. So, you know, we, we didn't even, we didn't even talk about why that is important. Um, and, 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 but without trust, nothing of that works. And, and that goes both ways, right? I mean, this, this is, um, a term, uh, that I actually really like, which is, um, uh, alignment enables autonomy. Uh, because very often people think about like autonomy, just autonomy. It's like, why, why can't we just do whatever we want? It's like, no, it's not a kindergarten. It's still a company. But if you actually are really understanding the creative vision and you're understanding, you know, some of the technical directions we have, you know, then, then, you know, you can be trusted with an enormous amount of autonomy. Um, and, and, but you need to get to that point. So, uh, with that said, I think that's a great segue for part two. So going into part two here, you know, we have now talked about, um, that trust is really important, you know, to build, um, an organization with kind of like a leadership of tomorrow, but what does it mean for, you know, the, the individual leader, you know, all the way from, you know, anybody, a team leader position, you know, associate producer, you know, up to, you know, any kind of executive position, I think all the way up to CEO or, or investor, if you're, um, if you're a VC backed, you know, company or or on the publishing side, if, if, if that's your kind of relationship on an, on an ownership level. So, um, can you both share a little bit, like, just like freely, I mean, how do you, how do you think, you know, leaders in the game industry are different today and tomorrow from what it was, you know, before, uh, maybe Kevin, you start this time. Yeah. Well, I think the, the biggest shift is how much the hybrid workplace has kind of disrupted things. Um, and I don't want to use the word disrupt uh, pejoratively. It's just, it's not, it's not better or worse necessarily because it's just, it's just very different. Right. Um, and especially, you know, for us as a studio that has for the past 20 plus years been in person, uh, we've had a handful of people that have been remote, but you know, now that remote is dominant, the way that you go about, you know, being a good leader, being a good manager has to change. Uh, because of the way that just your regular work dynamic has changed. Um, and this would be the part where I have some kind of great uh, nugget of wisdom. Um, but to be honest, I, I think it, it's, it all still lies in the very fundamentals of leadership and that it's understanding your people, uh, making sure that, uh, like you said, the, the alignment part is critical. Um, and then that all, always ties back to communication. Um, and figuring out the right methods of communication so that that alignment uh, is preserved. And then, you know, then the, the autonomy and the trust kind of flow from that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I love that you said that and the, you know, just about the al alignment. Absolutely. Right. If there's no product vision or no technical vision for what you're building, you can't have alignment. And then people are just kind of guessing what needs to be done. And so with that, kind of giving everyone a sandbox the plan with some boundaries and, and direction and you know some dates sometime in the future and like we're all working towards this thing let's let's figure out what those goals are 
Um, it, you know, it's just, it's just so important to do that. I think, you know, I think what I'm seeing, and I'm going to say, I, I, I don't think this is across the industry yet. Uh, I, I hope it's happening. I think there's still a lot of really old school practices in our industry. Um, I think Double Fine, honestly, has been at the forefront of some of the different ways of working. Um, and it shows in the games that they make. But um, I think for me personally, I just don't want to do things the way I've done them before. Uh, it's kind of boring. Like I, I want to do things differently. And so I, that's what we're trying to attract at Timber, you know, across our leadership it is come and do things differently and come and do things maybe in a way that, that you've always wanted to try, but, but weren't allowed to uh, at your previous studio. Or you have ideas or ways of working where you're like, I, I'd want to try this out. Um, let's try it. You know, we may have a slightly challenging conversation. I may go, oh God, that makes me really nervous. <laughs> but I'll take a deep breath and I'll try it. Um, you know, recently, uh, our lead producer, um, Alexi, who, who you've met, uh, Patrick, um, she uh, challenged all of us, you know, a big Slack message and said, hey, we've got people in a million different time zones. Um, a lot of our way we plan is very in person, um, which is something I really value. And she was like, how do we do this asynchronously, team? How are we going to do this? How do we service people who aren't in our time zone? How are we going to all work together? And she's just like, how are we going to embrace doing things asynchronously? And and I read the message and I tensed a little and was like, oh, I don't know, it makes me uncomfortable. But we're talking about it, right? I, I didn't shut it down and go, no, we will never do that at Timber, um, which I, I might have done in the past, to be totally honest. Um, I think naturally as a producer, sometimes you have a bit of a sense of wanting to control things. I don't know if you feel that coming from your past. Um, but I've had to let go of a lot of that, uh, for sure, um, in, in this new era. And that's been a, a bit of a transition over, over the last, I think, 10 years for me. But um, and but uh, I think you were talking about founders, too, and you know VCs and CEOs, Patrick. And I think in that way, you still need to be very involved. Like I was interviewing everybody at Timber at first. Then I went, okay, I'm just going to interview leads and principals and end up. And now I'm doing that. And and slowly I will, you know, slowly back away from those things as well. But I still need to be very involved. I still need to be able to give feedback. So does Joe, our, our VP. So does Jeff, our creative director. We need to be able to give feedback. We need to be involved. And the team needs to embrace that. They, they can't go, go away, leave us alone. We're just doing our thing. Um, and so it's really embracing that collaboration at all levels so that, you know, if Joe and I show up to a game review, everyone isn't like, oh my God, they're here. Everyone act differently. It's got to just feel normal. And so that's, you know, part of what we're doing is when we come in and, and step out that that just feels normal. And it's not, um, you know, we do have hierarchy um, for sure. We have leads, we have directors, you know, we do have that structure, but at the the team level, we really want them to feel that collaborative joint venture that they're all on. Um, but then if I jump into a sprint planning meeting, because I'm there to just coach them a bit on Agile, it doesn't feel like, oh gosh, Zoe's here, we're doing things wrong, and she's here to reprimand us. So I think that's a very interesting comment. Um, how do you, do you have some tips on how to do that well? Because, you know, the, the, the thing that you described that, you know, you are suddenly part of that review, and then people act differently. Uh, I think I think every leader can sympathize with that more or less. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And 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 you know how how do you what's your tips for how to do that? Uh, you know, be part of that. You know, to have a finger on the pulse, um, but but not disrupt. You know what's going on. You know, not disrupt the dynamic. It's it's a great question. So uh, we were struggling with that um, before. Uh, by the way, it was uh, it was making the team kind of go, oof, like, why are you here? What's going on? And so what we found we had to start doing is when we joined a meeting, just going, we're here. We're going to give feedback. Please don't act any differently. We're here to support you. We're here to help you. And we just kind of turned it into this like very supportive conversation um, and something that, you know, I'll, I usually just ask a lot of questions. That's kind of how, how I lead, but I'll just ask questions of, of the team. Um, Joe gives feedback and, and he'll just say, hey, maybe I don't have context for this, but have you thought about this? And, uh, you know, I'd love you to think about this, but it's not um, super directive or like you must do these things. And we try to make it conversational. Um, and what we realized was, is we weren't joining those things quite often enough. Um, we were, we were, uh, it's funny because I talk a lot about removing silos. We had siloed off a little bit and we were looking at things um, not with the team. 
And so I think what we're realizing right now is joining those team reviews is far more valuable actually for us Um, because we also get a pulse on how the team is working together and and what people are saying and what they're experiencing. Are they happy? You know, are they having fun? Um, And can we help with those things? Um, I would hate if anyone at the team, you know, was like, I can't message Zoe. She's the studio director. That makes me really sad even as we grow. Um, So I still do our values onboarding. And uh, people keep saying to me, like, I think you should record it. And I don't know if you should do that live. And that doesn't scale. And I'm like, I am hanging on to that. I I don't think I'm ever going to stop doing it. Because, you know, it gives that introduction to people to say, I'm human. (laughs) I'm not some strange figurehead that you can't talk to. So before, you know, having kind of like the same question with Kevin, I I just want to ask you, sorry. So how do you... um... You know, how do you make sure that, well, let's put it this way. Let's put it from the perspective of the team. So how how does the team know when you're having your kind of boss hat on and when you're like, hey, is this is just an ID? Uh, well, I mean, I don't think it's any different. Actually, I don't, I don't act any differently. I think, um, you know, I try not to put the boss hat on, actually. I think as you say that, I'm like, hmm, do I do that? I don't know. I think I'm the same in, in either moment. You know, um, is is it more about the for is it more about the forum? Because I mean, yeah, you know, as a student director, sometimes you do have to put the oh, boss. Oh, for out. sure. I mean, I give feedback. I mean, I, I'm sure people I work with directly on the executive team are all laughing right now as they're listening to this because they're like, "Oh, Zoe gets feedback." <laughs> so I'm pretty, I'm pretty direct with feedback. Um, but uh, yeah, I just try and make it not unusual, right? Like if I do go to review with the team, then I'm like, "Hey, I'm concerned about this thing. Let's talk about it." Um, you know, uh, uh, recently we were in a, a, a meeting with some of our product stewards and team stewards and, and some of our leads talking about our project. And I could tell that they were all super worried, but no one was saying anything. Um, and I will say I jumped into the meeting and, and I, I swore actually, and I just said, let's just get really real right now. What's going on? Like there's something going on and you're not saying it. And everyone just started talking. Um, but so, uh, you know, and maybe my presence there, I haven't asked them. Hmm. Now you're making me think maybe my presence there was not making them be totally honest. Um, but I, I think when I just opened the door and said, please just be totally honest with me, what's happening right now? It was a completely different conversation. Um, and there was a little bit of a like, I think we have to put on a brave face and, and we have it and we're good. And uh, trying to break that down a little and saying, it's okay to say I'm behind. It's okay to say, I don't think it's coming together. It's okay to say, you know, the sprint we just delivered is not what I wanted it to be. Uh, awesome. Um, wow. This is, uh, this is, this is, um, this is uh, such a great conversation. I, I wish that, um, um, it was, um, it was, it was always like that, you know, because very often, you know, the, what you said about putting the brave face on, it goes both ways. You know, it's very often that the team does that, but then also the management does that, and then no one is talking with each other, and then you're just on your way to 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 disaster. You know, I mean, Kevin, um, I want you to ship in on on the on the same topic. You know, I definitely agree with Zoe in the sense of, you know, I always try to go into things with, you know, assuring people that, you know, I'm not looking for anything to be wrong. I'm not expecting anything to be wrong. Um, but what I do want to do is just understand the situation so that we can make sure that, you know, what we're doing next is the the correct course of action. Right. And so, um, when giving feedback and with talking with teams and everything, it's, it's about, you know, I try to always be clear that, Hey, I'm just looking for ways to help you find possible solutions to what's going on. Uh, you know, this isn't about, you know, you know, I'm not, I'm not keeping tally of, you know, pluses and minuses or anything like that. There, it really is more of like, let's understand what's going on. What are the challenges? Okay. If we're being honest with each other and this is what the real situation is and okay, then we can figure out the right thing going forward. But you know, I cannot be as effective as I can be if I don't have all the information. And so, um, just putting myself forward in that way and saying like, I'm, i I really just try to help you all and I can do that better if we can have, you know, honest dialogue. Well, he should grab that as a sound bite. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can I ask Kevin a question? You sparked something in me. I'm very curious. 
at what moment, because I think I know this about you, in, in your production career, did you realize that you didn't have to fix everything yourself? Like, did you have a light bulb moment where you were like, I don't need to fix all these things? Um, I would say it was probably later in my career than I wanted to and more out of yeah. more out of necessity. Because yeah, at a certain point, you, you, know, you get on a project and you just, you're, you, you're not as staffed as you'd like to be. And so then, yeah, you, you learn that you have to just let certain things go so you can keep focused on the things that really matter. And uh, yeah, I know certainly earlier on in my career, I yeah, wanted to do everything all the time. And then eventually you, you just got to learn that, uh, yeah, well, it would be really nice to do that. And you really, really need to focus on this other stuff and making sure that it gets done. But, uh, yeah, like I said, probably later in my career than I wanted to, but it is an important realization to come to that you know yeah i yeah just i heard you talking i was like yeah it was it was actually recent for me uh i mean recent in the last five years but uh COVID actually helped me realize it um because i always uh in a physical space would sit on the floor in the middle of the team um quite accessible and i always thought i could never have an office because it meant that i wasn't available to the team all the time and COVID hit and i was actually getting work done I was at home in my office. Uh, I just have my cats to deal with. Uh, and and then I was like, oh, and I have a little more brain space and actually a little more like emotional capacity to deal with the bigger problems. And I think my big realization is, you know, we are going to have a physical space in, in Vancouver. I'll have an office. But it was that I, I need Zoe solo time at work. Um, and I wasn't realizing how much that was draining my energy. Uh, and that it wasn't actually benefiting the, the team. Like it was just something in my head that I had, I don't even know where it came from. Like that I created it somehow that I had to be available all the time to everyone for anything. Um, and that it was an interesting, it was a bit of a wake up call for me. But it's also very connected to autonomy. It's like, you know, you, you can't have teams that are autonomous if you're there all the time, you know? <laughs> yes, you're <laughs> totally right. Absolutely, right? Yeah, I uh, someone told them, uh, our lead producer, Lexi, told me the story that someone once early in her career told her that every problem was a production problem. And she's carried that with her for a really long time. And that's, gosh, that's a horrifically <laughs> hard burden to carry, right? Like, so every single time something's happening, you're like, oh my God, that's production fault. Oh God, got to fix it. And you can't do that. It's not physically possible. Um, and you're right. It's not going to empower the team, right? So I have a, I have a final question, um, you know, for you, Kevin, uh, just a little bit on the whole, um, you know, leadership, you know, succession, we can maybe call it. Um, what would be, you know, let's put it this way. Um, what are you looking for in junior leaders that you're hiring now that you would not have been looking for 10 years ago or five, even five years ago? What was, was it, was a new, um, quality that you definitely are looking for now that you did not look for before? I would say the, this is just coming from a you know, realization I had a couple years ago. I think one of the biggest things I look for now is someone who's willing to be wrong. Um, and I think that's, it's a, I think it's a extremely important characteristic that a leader needs to have. Like, you know, you want to have vision and you want to be able to solve problems with it, but you also have to be willing to be wrong and be able to note when you are wrong um, and, and move on from it, right? You be wrong, make a mistake, learn what you need to learn and move on. Uh, but I do, I, I mean, earlier in my career, you know, I definitely worked with people who would never admit a mistake. And that creates such a rough work environment. If you know that you're going to talk to someone, but they'll never be wrong. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, I think that's the big one for me is that people who understand that, uh, that they're going to be wrong and willing to accept that, that they could be wrong. That's awesome. Uh, so same with you, or do you have another one? Yeah, I I, I have another one, but I, I did want to say what I think is so interesting about that, because we really lean into that at Timber 2 uh, with our leaders, but is that is still not the, the typical behavior in the games industry, right? It's like you walk into the room and you have to be the expert and you have to have all the answers and people will just spew crap. <laughs> and you're like, ah. I'm not so sure you actually know what you're talking about, but that's what's expected of them, right? It's this kind of like alpha personality that has all the answers. 
Um, and, you know, that confidence and bravado, of just like, I'm just going to tell you all how it's going to be. Um, I'm not what I, I want anymore. Uh, it's, you know, really exactly what Kevin was saying is that ability to be wrong, but also the ability to say, I don't know the answer to that. And be like, I don't know the answer to that, but I'm going to try and find out or I'm going to learn about the thing you just asked me and I'm going to come back to you. And that that is okay to say that. And it is okay to say, I made that decision and I got it wrong. So let's talk about how we can do it better. And really from that is everyone assuming good intentions so that when something bad or wrong or a mistake happens, like what Kevin was saying, it's not malicious intent. It's just a mistake. And let's talk about it. Let's say we weren't quite sure how to approach it and, and do that. But then, yeah, absolutely be willing to walk in a room and say, I don't have all the answers and sometimes I'm going to get it wrong. And that doesn't mean you're a bad leader. Cool. I think I think that's a, a great um, way to end this conversation, even though I would love to converse, continue this conversation. <laughs> but like, 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 <laughs> like episode three, episode four. And, you know, maybe we can also do that in the future. I mean, obviously, this is actually kind of a follow up to um, the ones I've been doing with you. And, and I have a feeling that our audience um, would love to hear more from you. Um, so, you know, hopefully we can do that in the future. Um, thank you so much for, for this conversation. Um, two episodes felt like no time at all. Um, <laughs> that was really fast. Yeah, it goes really, yeah. really fast. <laughs> um, and you know, to you in the audience, um, I hope you like this, you know, you know what to do with the, you know, the, the like and the follow and all that, um, and comments and, um, hopefully we will see, um, so and Kevin very soon in the future on the podcast. Yeah. Absolutely. I have a All feeling right. Kevin and I are going to be chatting on LinkedIn after this. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you. Great to see you both again. Thank you. What? Bye, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. If you did, you know what to do. Share it in your social media so more people can take part and learn. And one more thing. Check out Favro Academy on favro.com for many more learnings. Thanks for tuning in.